Back on the charger. Well, that's too neat. This is a reproduction pedal kit from Brewers. They were actually out of stock when I went to order them, and luckily they got them back just a few days later. Very happy I got these instead of used cruddy originals that cost just as much or more. The clutch pedal actually has bearings in it instead of bushings. That's a nice piece. The kit fits pretty well. Although I can't quite figure out where the bolt in the brace is supposed to go. There's no hole there. <sighs> Time to break out the welder. You can also see here the brace that goes on the outside to back up the firewall to keep it from flexing every time you hit the clutch pedal. I actually got one of these separately, but Brewers also included it in the kit. Very cool. Kind of want to just sit in here and make vroom noises, but I guess I should keep installing parts instead. Listen, some of your four pans extra. You don't need all of it, all right? Kind of bouncing around getting different parts ready. Here's one tricky operation. These little dust seals keep the grease in and the dirt out on these Z-bar pivots. A little bit of lubricating spray on the dingus here. Put it in the vise. And there you go. One small detail on my swap, which might not be a problem for you if you're doing this. The IBRs on these 68, 69-ish transmissions are slightly too small for the bell housing I got. And this one's broken anyway, so I was always gonna need this. Input bearing retainer. That also came from Brewers. They even sent it with a seal and a gasket. And it's an easy swap. Funny, half the bolts and a quarter of the gasket are missing. Fancy. There was a casualty. My Ryobi 3 8 adapter for my impact. Oh, you served me well for like two and a half months under light use. I noticed two side plate bolts were missing. So I was just gonna go ahead and rob them off the other transmission. But the last moment I decided I should pull the plate and look, which I hate doing. It's a pain, all the linkage falls apart. But I'm glad I did. There's no gasket here at all. Off to get silicone. Putting a project like this together can be challenging in one particular way. Bolts, small, often overlooked, but very important. This is why I hoard stuff. Look at that, flywheel bolts sitting out back in the rain, but they'll clean up and I found everything else I need. I try to hoard all the good stuff and I'm 100% sure I saved my original drive line for the charger. While I was digging around the shop for it, it occurred to me that uh, my brother robbed the yoke off of it a year or two or three ago. So even if I find it, it's not gonna work. That's good. Now ah, this Roadrunner, you know, we're working on it. It's a good ways from done. I don't think Tom will mind if I borrow some parts out of it. Oh, there's a note for you. B-body, output yoke, 727 and 8 3 quarter are the same. Transmission length, Eight and three quarter and seven twenty seven are the same. You probably heard me say eight and three quarter there. I meant a eight thirty three manual transmission. Mm -hmm. My brain and my mouth work at different speeds, and if you were expecting perfection, well, come to the wrong place. A body, manual transmission, and nine oh four are the same length. So the drive shaft is the same. However, the yoke, I believe, is the larger 727 size. Don't quote me on that. I haven't done one of those in a while. I wanted to detail what I'm about to show you, just in case you, like just about everyone else in the universe, didn't see the first episode of the Three Pedal Solution. This is a 318 neutral balance car flywheel. It fits a 10, 10 and a half inch clutch, something like that. If you're unsure if you've got the right flywheel, check the diameter and count the teeth. I measured the diameter of the toothed ring to make sure it was the same as my torque converter, which it is. Larger truck flywheels will not work. They will not fit in the A833 bell housing and they will not engage correctly with the starter. It's gotta be a car flywheel from like the 70s and it's gotta have the right tooth count, it's gotta be the right diameter. 318, neutral, 
balance. You cannot do this with a 360 external balance flywheel. An external balance flywheel will have a bunch of huge holes drilled in the back off to one side. Make sure you don't have that. You may see small balancing holes. That's normal. But it can't be the 360 flywheel. That is the flex plate from behind a 360 magnum. If you're doing this with a 318 magnum, you need a flywheel from a 318 magnum with no weight. I said flywheel, I meant flex plate. You know the drill. These two components are what we're working with. Now for the flywheel magic. This is a brake lathe and it is my friend. If the guys at the local O'Reilly like you, they just let you use this thing. Small settering cone, small pair of cups, and it looks like this. There's a trick to this. The drum cutter points the wrong way. We need to go that way. Aha, uh -huh. upside down, totally wrong, but oh so right. Take a while. Forgot one important step. Flip the cutter head the right way up. Oopsie. Yeah, it works a little better that way. This isn't a friction surface, so it doesn't really matter. I'm just adding and feeding it back and forth. I'm trying to take out a bunch of meat fast because I'm bored. Admire the fanciness. Getting into the bolt holes now. Still not done. Don't mind the thunking sounds. Everything's fine. Not there yet. Looks like the bolt holes need to be completely gone. And you can see here how deep the cut needs to be. Deeper than it's turning out, looks like. I'll cut back into that shoulder, get rid of that nasty taper. Hopefully it's enough. I don't want to make this up again. And there you have it. Absolute perfection. Just a little gap here so nothing binds up. And a little air gap here for better pickuping. You'll notice I cut some meat off of where the pressure plate bolts go. Interesting thing is, the chunk I removed, the bolts don't even hit. No problem. You can always buzz the bolt ends if it becomes a problem. Hopefully this is an easy process to understand. If you don't understand what I just did, ask your machinist. If your machinist doesn't understand what I just did, get a new one? I don't know if these count as big boy chips, but they're pretty big. <laughs> Sweet, beautiful, all good to go, right? Wrong. Gotta turn it around and face the damn thing. So much beautifishness. Almost. Like I know what I'm doing. When you do call in a favor, always make sure to clean up your god awful mess. Are you bored? I'm bored. It's like watching paint dry or something. Time today. I think it's about that. Gotta run it again. Somebody forgot to tighten the bar. Oh, and uh, I broke an irreplaceable screw. I'm sure they won't mind. Any day now. Well, that's just too nice. So, of course, I got greasy fingerprints on it immediately. All right, now I'm excited. Back to the secret lair. Well, I'm not 100% sure. But I am about 76.5% sure I've got everything in the building I need to at least make the car run and drive. All right, goop the heck out of that. A couple more bolts and I think it's ready to go in. Here's the pilot bearing I was talking about. Notice it's in a spacer, taps into the back of the crank, not into the old school pilot hole, which not all of these are drilled for as I understand. Costs about 17 bucks now. And I ordered it for 97 Ram, 1500, 59 gas, five speed. That's what it looks like installed. One thing I am missing is the correct countersunk bolts to go in these recessed holes. Problem solving. Perfection. You know, I knew this one wouldn't last long when I realized it was hollow. This is getting pretty good, but machining took all day, so this is as far as I'm going to get tonight. Would you believe me if I told you I cracked my custom skinny cheapo socket? No way, that was good stuff. Hello there. 
What are you doing? Ah, good call. Have a daughter, watch her reach school age, walk her to the bus, put her on there with a bunch of other kids, and watch her drive away. And if it doesn't melt you into just goo, well, you might not be human. Back on the charger, she came home from the hospital in and went to her first day of school in, in between transmissions breaking. Speaking of which, time to bolt that in. Here's why you can't use your factory automatic flex plate bolts. Firewall bolts are much longer. Um, I actually can't remember from the last time I did this. I'll be lucky if they're long enough to fit the sandwich plate as well. Nah, I think it's fine. Let's say it's fine. Next several minutes of my life looks like this. Oh, but it's worth it. Important side note. Hold your bolts carefully or they disappear into the horrible rat's nest crap hole you haven't cleaned up yet. There are you. There you are, you little piece of. Now, these only go one way. You got two bolt holes extremely close to each other. It makes it pretty easy. Okay. Stay. Did I say easy? What I meant was the flywheel is extremely heavy and it sucks. Also, it's a no on factory flywheel bolts. There's only a thread sticking out. Great. Off to the hardware store. I've also just realized I'm uh, missing some bushings here. Uh, or those holes are just totally the wrong size. Time to rebuild a shifter. I'm only using this one because it's the only one we have in the collection that my pistol grip will bolt to. But one of the nuts is gone and the one that's there has no threads, none. So I guess I need some bolts too. For a minute there, I thought maybe I could just lift this whole overdrive van shift linkage setup. Unfortunately, because it gets mounted up and slightly angled forward, they're all about a half inch short. So I'm gonna have to keep going with this uh, piece together setup I've got. Uh, something tells me I'm gonna learn more than I ever wanted to know about these today. Well, here's my genius plan. Take all the guts from this one with the right size pivots. Put them in this one, replace the missing bolt, and get everything cleaned, rebuilt, greased, nice, ready to go, all at the same time. That's gonna be too good. If the later guts even fit. Yep. The levers are actually shaped slightly differently. Mostly reverse. I think it's gonna be fine. I don't even have the correct reverse rod, so yeah, we'll just wing it. This one has this spring dust plate thingy, which the other one did not have. Hard to do stuff with one hand. Here are the guts out. Okay, here it is assembled as I envisioned. It seems to fit. I think it's gonna work. So now I'm just gonna clean the crap out of everything. Old bench grinder wire wheels getting the workout today. Okay, I got all the bits clean, and despite trying to keep them all in order, I somehow flipped the one, two, and uh, three, four rods. But that's why you keep an example. I think I've got it all back in order. Now I'm going to apply a light film of grease to everything in here. Pray that this thing is sealed tight enough that uh, road grime doesn't get in there. Although I'm sure it will. And assemble it. Well, that was a messy job, but someone had to do it. I think it's gonna be nice. That's the smoothest moving one I've ever seen. I left the wrong shift rods on there the whole time so I could easily identify which is which. I know reverse is the long one and three, four is the other long one, but it doesn't stick down as far. Now I'm gonna swap them out for the right-ish ones, bolt it on there and see how it shifts. Well, the forward gear linkages I got work perfectly. I had to make some modifications for reverse. This was just a random we found in uh, Tom's collection. And, um, well, it's close, but uh, the dingus end was too big. It's a little funky, but I think it's gonna work. I would have just used the one from the overdrive van transmission I've been grabbing parts off of, but, um, 
that's seized and there are hardly any threads left and I almost broke it already. So this is gonna have to do. Looks like a shift linkage to me. Let's see if it works. Also side note, trust nothing, check everything. Drain plug was loose too. Just look at it. Well, it's hard to do on the ground. One, two, three, four, and reverse. It's not perfect, but the adjustment, at least on the forward gears, is pretty darn good. I kind of like reverse being a little off, so you can't hit it on accident. That's just so cool. All right. Okay, you probably didn't notice on the video, it actually wasn't fully engaging third gear. So I guess that wasn't centered when I said it, but I'll get to that later. Now I gotta go tow a van with three wheels an hour away in the rain. Can't wait. I think I'd like to be a weatherman. Just make crap up all day. Oh, it's gonna stop raining in 10 minutes. He said two hours ago. All right, maybe it's done now. Of course, the one morning I need the trailer. I guess I'll have some breakfast. We drink another cup of coffee, and if it's still in the way, I will test the power wagon winch again. Maybe I'll install a four-speed tomorrow. If I get the right bolts. And if I don't forget anything else. Good old self-fixing Dodge. It idles now. Ah, my priceless artifacts are getting rained on!